Our next speaker works in cybersecurity research at Duo Security and has a long-time interest in the intersection of education, academia, and technology. Please welcome Eldridge Alexander. In the 1960s, Steve O'Day immigrated from the Middle East to the United States. In 1970, he started attending undergraduate university just down the street at University of Michigan. He attended there, worked hard, studied hard, and graduated on time. And he raised seven children, both while he was studying there and afterwards. One of his children grew up and decided that he wanted to attend his father's alma mater. Steve had done well in the intervening years, so he was able to fund part of his son Rami's uh, education. Rami also took out student loans uh, and worked at a restaurant for living ex expenses. But Rami still graduated in debt, unlike his father. Now, I want to come back to the O'Days in a moment, uh, but first I want to talk about universities in general. They've been around for a long time, uh, of course. Oxford University, unsurprisingly, is the oldest still operating university in the English-speaking world. And Oxford and its younger siblings, as they were uh, created and grew, were founded with lofty academic goals. Uh, the most crucial was to share knowledge and also to create and discover knowledge. Now, I'm not going to be naive enough to suggest that these lofty academic goals were the only things influencing these institutions. There are, of course, other influences uh, influencing them. But these other influences were always secondary to the lofty academic goals that founded these universities, or almost always, until uh, the most recent generation or two. Uh, at, in the most recent generation or two, these other influences have been coming outsized in how much they affect these institutions. Uh, and so the, the influences vary, but I want to talk about a couple of them and the ones that are influencing the universities and how the universities are in turn, in turn influencing society. One that's obvious is job training. Uh, today, not all, but many employers are expecting graduates to come out of undergraduate university trained, not necessarily educated. They want people that can begin work immediately in a job. An expectation from students and graduates is cost justification. They want the job that they get with their degree to be able to pay for the degree that they just got to get the job. Uh, another is acceptance rate, an influence of the university itself. As previous generations succeeded so much with undergraduate degrees, uh, the current generations are applying in far greater numbers to universities, and universities are encouraged to accept, pass, and graduate more. Profit is, of course, nothing new at all to any institution, pretty much, uh, but how much profit universities need to actually function has changed. Uh, in the 1980s, tuition funded 25% of American university operations, whereas today it's 50%, which has, of course, in turn, influenced debt and student costs. Tuition has risen out of pace with wages, minimum or otherwise, which is changing how students view university and how it can affect their lives. Uh, to go back to the old days, uh, to use some of the U of M's public data, but this is indicative of American universities in general, uh, when Steve O'Day attended the university, tuition was $240, minimum wage was almost a buck and a half, so he needed to work five full-time weeks a year to pay for his education. When his son graduated in 2008, uh, tuition was over $5,000, minimum wage had risen to $655, but to pay for his university, he needed to work 20 full-time weeks a year just to pay for his education. If he worked the same amount as his father, he would have graduated with over $15,000 in debt. If he'd worked two or three times as much as his father, he still would have graduated thousands of dollars in debt just for his education, not regarding any of his other expenses. Now, I'm not an economist or a political scientist. I just play one at Ignite Talks. Uh, but these are some of the suggestions that I think might remediate some of the effects these are having on students and society and universities in general. Uh, one is to require educational loans to be 0% APR. Uh, this would obviously have many effects beyond just this one, but it would make education more accessible. Uh, another would be to take the obvious but very impactful across all of society step of raising minimum wage. Uh, so this would have a lot of effects, but one would certainly be to make higher education more accessible to more people. 
And then a, a final one uh, would be to make trade schools socially acceptable. Not that they are not necessarily acceptable, but university was far more accessible to many people uh, a generation ago. And many students, just like their employers, are wanting to get job training. And while universities provide that, it's important that we communicate to students that trade schools can provide that as well. Thank you. Thanks, Eldridge.